Welcome to PCR 2024. My name is Michael Hauda, I'm from Germany, and I'm here today with Michael Lee from Hong Kong. And the Hi. topic we would like to talk about is DCB PCI in de novo lesions. Michael, when we talk about that topic, what is important here? We learned that when we talk about DCB PCI, lesion preparation plays an utmost role. Can you tell us a little bit about how to perform that best? Yes, of course, Michael. Um, I think uh, we have pretty solid evidence for DCP for ISR, but for de novo lesions, we they are actually accumulating evidence showing us that uh, for uh, lesions like uh, small vessel disease, bifurcation lesions, long diffuse disease, there might be a role of DCP, although we might need more evidence for that. Uh, but in my opinion, when you want to have a good result with DCP, lesion preparation is very important. We should prepare the lesion, especially if it is calcified, we should do calcium modification, we should adequately pre-dilate the lesion and then end up with residual stenosis less than 30% or there's no major dissection, not more than A or B dissection. Then probably we can consider DCP to give the best long-term outcomes. You mentioned the acceptance of a dissection after the lesion preparation. This might be something difficult, in particular if you only look at the angiogram. Now tell us please how much acceptance you have to develop to really proceed with the DCB PCI on a broader fashion. So do you need interconary imaging to make sure that the dissection is good enough to kept without a stent? Do we need something like interconary physiology to show that the flow is not limited by that dissection? What is your opinion on that? I would think uh, majority of the cases we might do without uh, imaging or physiological studies because angiogram can tell us very uh, uh, much information about how we have prepared the lesion. So if we see good flow, less than 30, 20, 30 percent residual stenosis, then probably we can reliably use a DCP to treat uh, these uh, lesions. But in case of any doubt or in case we really want to see how the lesion is composed of, like calci uh, calcium or fibrotic lesions, then in that case, uh, intracoronary imaging might be important in, in this particular scenarios. Thank you. But uh, Michael, can I just ask you? Sure. What, what, what do you think um, we need to show that DCP really works for these de novo lesions? For now, we don't really have good uh, evidence, uh, at least a randomized control trial, to show uh, this uh, difference. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. We, we have data from randomized trials with the indication of DCB in small vessels. Yes. But small vessels is not what we are really looking for. We need to look at a broader spectrum of vessel sizes up to the big vessels, and therefore we need to await the results of the two big randomized trials that are comparing DCB-PCI in de novo lesions versus DS-PCI. It will take a little bit more of time to get these results, but I think these results will show us where the whole technology will take, take its part in this spectrum of interventional technologies. That's great. And how about the DAPT duration? We talk, often talk about this in DES, yeah. but in DCB, we really don't have good evidence to show us how long should we keep DAPT for ACS patients or, and for non-ACS patients. I think this is absolutely not well defined. Yes. Almost everybody does it a little bit different from, from uh, what is in the guidelines for the drug eluting stent. I mean, when I look at the patient spectrum, if I have an ACS patient, I strictly would go for the duration okay. uh, that is recommended in the guidelines for an ACS patient. If I'm in a stable patient scenario, chronic uh, coronary syndrome patient, actually you can go for shorter. Mm -hmm. I mean, the question is whether you can go for only four weeks or even only go for a single agent antiplatelet therapy. I mean, these are all open questions that need to be answered by adequately powered and conducted randomized trials. But at the moment, we don't unfortunately have these answers. A very important question is in that topic is, of course, once you have done your lesion preparation, when not to proceed with the DCB, but to switch from your original plan to a stent procedure. Uh, yes, that's very important. I think we should have a low threshold to switch to um, DES in case there are problems with pre-dilatation or even after DCB you find uh, unsatisfactory 
uh, results, then we should have no hesitation to uh, switch to DES. Situations like if there are still um, a significant recoil or residual stenosis more than 30%, or there is a flow-limiting dissection more than type A and B, then probably we should consider putting in a DES as a bailout uh, procedure uh, in order to give the best outcomes for the, our patients. And what to do if you take the decision after the DCB has been performed to change your mind and go for a stent procedure? Because there is a significant dissection now, how to do that correctly? Because then you potentially mix up the application of the drug from the balloon together with another additional drug from the stent. Do we have safety data to support this? What's on that? I don't think we have solid data on that. The only data we know um, after DCB, if we put in a bare metal stand, it's not going to help because the mm. restenosis rate, the late lumen loss will be uh, much greater than just DCB alone. Mm -hmm. But uh, if for like rescue situation that you have to put in a DES after DCB, I would probably put in a sh as short as possible DES just to cover the dissection hoping that uh, you will uh, actually rescue the patient and then uh, get the patient out of the lab. Uh, I think we need more long-term data to show us whether DEB plus DES actually would actually cause uh, more harm than uh, good to the patients. That's something that we need more evidence on. But as a bailout situation, I will put in a shorter DES to just cover the yeah. dissection. Thank you. So just to wrap up that uh, little conversation here, the DCB PCI is an appealing technology. We learned more and more how to properly do that. But we have to say that we need to await the scientific data coming from the randomized trial to really position that technology in the complete, complete spectrum of PCI technologies. Michael, thank you so much for you. sharing this interview with me.